Hi, Wes Scott from Canon Scott. Today we're going to talk about what are the statutory presumptions of fraud under Section 523 of the Bankruptcy Code. You know, we've talked about the fact that when you file a bankruptcy, uh, the presumption uh, favors um, discharging your unsecured debts. And, uh, you know, creditors all the time, of course, call us and say, well, look, we don't like this or we don't like that. Well, of course you don't like it. Um, and you cannot contract away somebody's right to file bankruptcy. Otherwise, everybody would do it, right? You know, in the contract, you just say, look, you can't file bankruptcy on this. Well, you can't do that. That's an ineffective provision. Um, there are situations where creditors can object to you discharging debts with them in bankruptcy, and they're found in Section 523 of the Code, and they are limited, and they're meant to be limited because, again, we know you don't like it, but it's going to be discharged because that's why we call it a fresh start bankruptcy. Unless you bring an action and object to the, the, the debtor discharging a debt, the most common reason is for fraud, uh, 523A4. But there are presumptions of non-dischargeability uh, in uh, Section 523. For example, if a debtor... Um, uses a credit card and incurs over $675 worth of luxury goods within 90 days prior to filing bankruptcy, it's considered, it's presumed to be non-dischargeable. Likewise, if you've taken a cash advance of uh, more than $950 within 70 days of filing bankruptcy, the presumption is it's non-dischargeable. The reason why that's important is because if it's presumed to be non-dischargeable, you have the burden of proving that it is dischargeable, that it wasn't fraudulent. You do not want the presumption. You want the creditor to have um, the uh, job of proving fraud. When the time is right, when you are ready, reach out to Kane and Scott. You'll be so thankful you did. Have a good day.